thirsty about it you hear me crying me 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 crying me crying me about it you hear me crying me crying me about it you hear me crying me crying me crying me make it drop honey It's been about a month since I did my first video in Miami. <clears throat> what I've what I've uh, what I've discovered so far is how much more difficult uh, it is uh, to try to get in shape approaching 50. Uh, not to mention running different businesses and uh, and traveling a lot. Um, so one of my my greatest challenges is is trying to separate who I was as an athlete to who I am now as a person because as I said before you know if you were a great college athlete or a weekend warrior or maybe played a professional sport or something you know one of the hardest things is to accept who we are now you know 20 30 years later um, so what I'm grappling with now is is trying to re-understand and learn about my body at the age of 50 instead of saying what I could do in my 20s and my 30s. Um, that's one of the, the greatest challenges that, I've, uh, that I've, I've come across so far. Um, the other thing is, is understanding that I can't eat the same way that I, I did before when I was younger. I, I honestly don't have the mentality, right? I don't have the mentality to, to go and eat that bland type of food. So discovering different ways that I can actually eat that are still healthy and help me achieve my goal um, of trying to get back in shape at 50 has been a really uh, a big learning curve for me. So those are some of the major things that I've uh, been dealing with and discovering. And then also just trying to remember uh, that you know I'm no longer an athlete and I can't have that mentality because uh, that's going to cause me to be too sore and I, I, I just can't, I don't have the output of training that way. So also discovering different ways to train without having to use a heavy weight and a pound just and everything but keeping the intensity up has been one of the, the key factors in, uh, in helping me to try to remain calm and everything and not let my ego get uh, caught up when I'm uh, training beside some young buck who's thrown around the way to have to remember that, you know, what I'm trying to do. So again, you know, um, I hope that you guys all uh, follow um, me on the uh, Flex at 50, uh, you know, my uh, YouTube page is the official Flex Wheeler, the official Flex Wheeler. Uh, my Instagram is official Flex Wheeler. And uh, let's do this together. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go get to the gym. I'm gonna meet with Stan F. the Rhino. I'm gonna have him turn it down, a whole bunch of clicks, and uh, we're gonna bang out probably some shoulders. So I'll see you guys in a second. As I said before, we're going to train with Stan here. I'm going to have him turn it down a couple of notches because I can't keep up with him normally. But um, like I was saying before, uh, one of the hardest things for premier athletes is to, to turn over the reins and allow somebody else to help them. So I'm going to completely follow Stan on uh, whatever he wants to do. I know our workout's going to be shoulders, so uh, we'll go from there, bro. Yeah. You know, and today we're going to do a lot of the stuff that I do when the camera's not on. So you're going to actually see what, what goes on when I'm not trying to hurt myself. Uh, because, you know, I'm pushing 48, flex 50, and we're trying to, to maintain our, our joints and, and uh, you know, our health long term. So today we're going to shoot uh, a lot of the things that help me stay healthy and, and keep me from, uh, from hurting all the time. And we'll take you through it step by step. Getting started on shoulder day, it's always bands. I like the thing about the thing I like about bands is the constant tension. When you use uh, weights, the uh, weight changes throughout the range of motion. Sometimes your tendons will, will, will uh, tighten and loosen and cause kind of like that uh, guitar string sort of feel, and that's how tendonitis starts to, to develop. And with a, a nice band, you have that constant tension. So this is how we can warm up without putting any uh, strain on the joint. I'll do this just to try and get loosened up and get warmed up so when I grab uh, some weights, they, uh, they feel good, it's fluid. And so we'll go through some ranges of motion here, we'll, we'll do some side raises, 
we do some uh, some rear some rear stuff here like this just to work the, the shoulder through its full range of motion. It takes me a while. I'm like a, the tin man without an oil can. I'm an old jalopy and I, I gotta warm up a while. It might take me 20, 30 minutes sometimes before I can really grab some serious weight. And that's just uh, something that I do to make sure I can keep doing this for the long term. We'll move into picking some exercises. Now look, just because we're up in years and we're trying to take care of our bodies doesn't mean we don't want to train. There's a difference between exercising and training. I don't want to come in here and just go through the motions. I still want to push my body to try and get better. And so I will pick exercises that give me the biggest return on my investment, which means generally I try and stay away from a lot of machines. I try and pick some multi-joint movements that require the whole body. I like to pick exercises that require me to stand up balance. Uh, problem is I can't do overhead press with a straight bar anymore. The reason being is with a straight bar, take a look at this, anytime you fix your hands onto a straight bar, what one arm does, the other one has to go through that same range. It, it, it inhibits independent range of motion. And so I can't do overhead presses with a straight bar anymore without feeling a lot of pain from the labrum I have torn in my shoulders. So, but I still want to do an upright shoulder movement where I'm standing because it yields the greatest benefit to me for my for my time and energy invested. It actually gives me a return on that. It's not exercising, it's still training and I can, I can challenge myself. So I'll grab dumbbells because it allows independent range of motion. Uh, and uh, then I'll just go with a one-arm dumbbell at a time. And I can I can get up to a pretty heavy weight, challenge myself without injuring myself. So that's what we'll start is the dumbbell presses. start pretty light, but we don't pre-exhaust ourselves. I'm not going to get much benefit out of doing 10 reps with 30 pounds, then 10 reps with 40 pounds, then 10 reps with 50 pounds. It just doesn't, isn't enough weight to affect a response. And so when I do lighter weights to warm up, I'll only need to do a few reps. I don't need to burn myself out. I don't need a whole lot of repetitions. It's just, it's just additional strain on the joints and on the tendons. So I'll just make sure that I'm initially just kind of warming up and getting through the whole range of motion. And I only need to hit about four or five reps here. And then I can start working my way up the stack without pre-exhausting myself. <clears throat> I'm feeling it, I'm getting balanced. <clears throat> Rather than doing a static stretch, I'll do kind of a, a bouncing motion here to, to take myself through the range of motion, make sure that I, I'm all stretched out and warmed up. That's all I need is just a few reps there. Brief rest, I'll jump up to more weight. Keep that arm out for counter balance, get your knees bent a little bit. There we go. Put a little of the load on your butt, not your lower back. Your butt's already big. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know, as long as you're challenging yourself, you're going to get results from that. If you do something more than you did yesterday, you take your body somewhere it hasn't been before, it's going to adapt, you're going to get a great response from that. So don't try and grab the huge heavy weights, just try and start working yourself up gradually until it's something that you're in control of and it challenges you enough so that you can get some sort of result. I still believe I can get results at this age. I've done, uh, you know, obviously I've lost a lot of weight since I was competing in powerlifting, but I still believe I can make changes to my physique and get better and maintain or maybe even grow some strength here and there. That's enough for us here. Yeah. We got nuts and iron. Well, shoulders got three heads, so we want to work them all. So the next thing I do is I hit some uh, some rear delt 
I found that the rear delt fly one arm again allows me way more a little yeah. more independent range of motion, yeah. so I'm not all pinching here. Yeah. So we'll hit some uh, some rear fly yeah, or lateral. So we want to work the muscle from all angles, of course. We want a good balance. The rear delt. I like to do this one one arm. So I'm not feeling any pinching or anything in my traps or my neck. And I like the constant tension from this movement. One of my favorite exercises, again, because I can't do the, the free bar press anymore, uh, is to use a hack squat or a leg press as a shoulder press. One, because I like the full body in the movement. I like the core involved. Two, because it doesn't cause any pain in my shoulders. And because I can load it up pretty heavy and still get a good result from it. Also, I'm able to set it down after each rep, so I'm not experiencing that, that uh, compression force down here like I would with a free bar movement. So, take a look here, each rep, I'll press and reset. I can rest it right there. That's pretty important for me because if I try and bounce, that's when I start getting tendonitis in my elbows from the compression. So, I'm gonna press, rest it. Tight core, explosive through the whole body. I love this. Paramedics. <laughs> like I said, one of the most difficult things is uh, handing over the reins and allowing somebody else to to lead you. So, as you see, that we go through these variations of different workouts and training with different people, it'd be a completely different style. But what I found out uh, in my older age is uh, it's more than one way of skinning a cat. And in my mentality, as I said before, I, I only have one way because that's the way I trained all my life. So to be able to here and get to the stand and find out a whole different way of training and might proceed and C2 flexure that's going to be coming up. Uh, what makes it more difficult is it's, it's not something that I'm used to. Uh, so the intensity is a lot higher for me um, trying to do a new movement. But yet also understanding my, my abilities and my in inabilities of what I can and I can't do. So. That's one of the, the biggest things and even as Stan uh, alluded to uh, more than once is we have to understand and respect who we are now being older and we want to stay in this game a lot longer so you have to be wiser uh, than you were before in your training uh, sequels and uh, I mean it's just an honor to have somebody like him as a, a friend, a business partner and a confidant uh, to be able to train with him so it's weird now because uh, the teacher uh, becomes the student. Yeah, becomes the student, and that's the evolution of this whole thing. So you can go ahead and close out on your bro. Yeah, you know, and the big thing is, is consistency is more important than intensity. And injuries are really going to mess with your consistency. So we're really trying to stay healthy and train consistently. And every now and then, your body will tell you when you can push it hard. Listen to it; it'll tell you when you can do more, and then back off when it's not talking to you that way. So as long as we can keep getting our workouts in and take care of our body, this is, this is a long-term plan. It's a marathon, not a sprint. There is no finish line. This is a great quality of life. Yeah, it is. That's the key thing, quality of life and, and, and more so uh, it's a lifestyle. So again, please follow me on my, my Instagram, Official Flex Wheeler, and a YouTube page, The Official Flex Wheeler. We'll see you till next time.